Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving uh, spent with family, friends, uh, giving back, and hopefully much less arguing than what has gone on uh, in these last few months uh, here in the Congress. That said, we are back today to consider three bills that once again don't do anything to solve the problems that matter most to our constituents. Uh, after weeks of fighting amongst themselves, House Republicans still haven't gotten the memo. Instead of lowering costs for everyday people or bringing good paying jobs back to America or, or passing comprehensive legislation to keep communities safe and thriving, they're focused on culture wars and trying to advance uh, bills that they couldn't even uh, get on the House floor the first time. H.R. 5283 targets federal funding that helps support temporary shelters for certain non-citizens, including migrants seeking asylum. This bill fails to address the humanitarian crisis or security needs at, the, at our border and will never become law. S.J. Res. 32 would reverse a rule that aims to increase opportunity for underserved small businesses like family farms and minor, minority-owned businesses. This CRA faces strong opposition since it threatens uh, steps to improve transparency and fairness in small business lending. H.R. 5961 is a bill to force the U.S. to go back on the recent prisoner swap with Iran and bar Iranian funds held abroad from being used to purchase food and medicine. Not only is this bad policy, this committee already reported a rule for it, which failed on the House floor. I mean, come on. Since taking the majority in January, House Republicans have only exhibited incompetence and chaos. We wasted 20 days, 20 days this year, waiting for House Republicans to stop fighting with each, with each other long enough to elect a speaker. The House was held hostage for days in June because a tiny extreme faction of the Republican conference chose to throw a fit over the debt deal negotiated by President Biden and then Speaker McCarthy. They struck down a rule on the floor for the first time in over decades, holding the House floor schedule hostage for all, uh, for all, uh, you know, hold, um, holding the House floor schedule hostage all for camera time and to push their conference even further to the right. Since then, we've seen three more rules, rule votes fail this Congress. The record is five. I'm no fortune teller, but given that four rules have failed this year and we are less than halfway through the 118th Congress, I'd say this Republican majority is on track to break that record. We have also seen uh, over 40 closed rules uh, on, on the floor this year, 40. Uh, and for the Rules Committee, that, is, that, have, that, uh, that have been structured open rules, 68% uh, of all bipartisan amendments submitted have been blocked, hell over half of Republican amendments have been blocked by their own leadership. And to clarify for everyone watching, there hasn't been a single open rule uh, since the, this Republican uh, majority took over, despite what my friends across the aisle claim when the House Rules Package first passed. According, uh, according to uh, House Republicans, um, I may take that back, I think one, you had one open rule right. since we, we began. According to House Republicans, this legislative process for the 118th Congress was supposed to be the most open, most transparent, and most inc inclusive uh, of all Congresses. Yet, uh, they, they haven't made good on the promise. In fact, they really haven't made good on most of their promises. One of our Republican uh, colleagues on this committee uh, took to the House floor and, and said as much, and I quote, nothing but empty promises, he went on to say. We haven't done anything. One thing. I want my Republican colleagues to give me one thing, one, that I can go campaign on and say we did. One, anybody sitting in the complex, if you want to come down to the floor and come explain to me one material, meaningful, significant thing the Republican majority has done, end quote. Uh, my, the, my colleague was, was, was here a minute ago, but maybe he's back down on the floor waiting for somebody to tell him the one thing that the Republican majority has accomplished. The sheer incompetence and the chaos that we've seen this year uh, you know, members of Congress physically tussling in the hallways, threatening to fight witnesses, holding the floor hostage, all of it. Enough is enough. And all I can say with the utmost respect uh, for the chairman uh, is that uh, none of this falls on your shoulders. I think you've tried your best with the hand you've been dealt. Uh, you've, you've run this committee as smoothly as possible. And the key here is that I know everything you do is to try to make this institution better. Unlike some in this body, you don't want to dismantle and destroy, you want to make this institution stronger. 
I just wish that other members would join you and get on the same page. Then just maybe we could work together and get something big done for the American people. Uh, and with that, I yield back my time, Mr. Chairman.